Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will have a look about the orbits and uh, I'm making this video in English because yesterday I got few comments to upload my video in English. So I have decided that the current affairs videos which I will upload year after will be in English as well as in Tamil. That is, I'm going to upload the same videos in different languages. Fine. And friends, coming to the topic that is with respect to the orbits. In this video, I will try to give the basics of orbits because these things are background for specific set of current affairs with respect to the science that is space science so you need to have a clear-cut understanding in order to have a clarity fine so first of all you need to know what is the meaning of an orbit see friends an orbit in a layman term means a path fine so it is a path which is taken by a satellite so the satellite may be man-made or natural and the path which is taken by the satellite is called as an orbit fine and the definition which i have given here is taken from the nasa website where it mentions an orbit is a regular repeating path that one object in space take around another one fine and friends again it is common that you should know orbits come in different shapes that is an orbit may be elliptical it may be circular and so on so it comes in different shape fine and friends for your base Basic understanding orbits are classified into three major types one is equatorial and the other one is polar and the other one is inclined fine so as the name depicts polar orbit will revolve around the earth from poles to poles and the equatorial orbit will revolve around the earth above the equator and the inclined orbit will be inclined from the equator you remember in this way that the inclined orbit will be between polar orbit and equatorial orbit fine so these are three basic orbits and friends again orbits are classified into three different types that is low earth middle earth and high earth orbit see friends these classification are made with respect to the altitude that is the distance from the earth's surface fine so if you take low earth orbit then the satellite will be placed below 1000 km fine so any satellite above the earth's surface and if it is below 1000 kilometers then it is said to be in low earth orbit and the medium earth orbit will be in between 1000 to 10000 fine and high earth orbit will be in between 10000 to 36000 kilometers approximately fine so if any satellite is placed say for instance it is placed at 500 kilometers above the earth's surface then it is said to be in low earth orbit fine so this is how you classify orbit based on the altitude fine so i hope you would have got a clarity with respect to polar orbit equatorial orbit inclined orbit low earth orbit medium earth orbit and high earth orbit fine so what we will do now is we will see about geosynchronous orbit because you can come across this orbit in the newspaper frequently and it is very important for upsc prelims examination fine so if a satellite is placed say about 35786 kilometers above the earth's surface then the satellite is said to be in geosynchronous orbit fine and friends you need to know the important feature of geosynchronous orbit that is the revolution speed of the satellite will be equal to the rotating speed of the earth see friends i will give you an example to remember this say you have launched a satellite from sri harikota and you have placed the satellite say above Chennai fine so at any point of time if you look at the sky then you can see the satellite about Chennai. This is because the revolution speed of the satellite is equal to the rotating speed of the earth. Fine. So, as the earth rotates, the satellite revolves around the earth at the same speed. That is, the satellite will take 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4.09 seconds exactly to revolve around the earth. That is a day. Fine. And because of this reason, the satellite which are placed in geosynchronous orbit appear to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky fine i hope you got the point and because of this important feature with respect to the sorbet there is no need for you to adjust the antenna or to change the antenna in order to receive signals fine so a fixed antenna will solve the purpose and because of this feature it is used for communication applications fine so this is all about geosynchronous orbit now what we'll do is we'll see about geostationary orbit fine if a satellite is placed above the earth's surface that is at the height of 36 thousand kilometers approximately and if the satellite is placed above the equator plus if the rotating speed of the earth matches the revolving speed of the satellite then it is said to be in geostationary. 
geostationary orbit fine so friends please have a clear understanding that is in geostationary orbit the satellite will be placed about 36000 kilometers approximately and the revolution speed of the satellite will be same to the rotating speed of the earth plus the satellite will be placed above the equator fine so this is the point which you need to focus on that is the satellite will be placed above the equator fine and the satellite will revolve around the earth from west to east fine and one more important feature of this geostationary orbit is that if a satellite is placed in the geostationary orbit then a single satellite can cover one third of the earth so logically speaking three satellites in the geostationary orbit can provide you full coverage of the earth so this is the important feature of geostationary orbit fine see except for the polar regions it will have a full coverage fine and because of this particular feature this geostationary orbit is a an ideal orbit for telecommunications and also for monitoring weather patterns fine and it is also utilized for environmental conditions okay friends so i hope you will have a clarity about the geostationary and geosynchronous orbit fine so what we will do now is we will see the similarities and difference of both the orbit in order to have a clear cut understand fine so the similarities would be the altitude will be same that is 35786 kilometers above the earth surface yes it is same for both geosynchronous orbit and geostationary orbit and the period of revolution of the satellite is equal to the rotating speed of the earth yes again we know that and it is because of this feature the satellite appears to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky fine so i hope this feature is understood by you fine now we'll see the difference so the difference is the geostationary orbit is a circular orbit fine so i hope everyone should know that your equator is in a circular shape so does the orbit of geostationary while the geosynchronous orbits are not circular fine so geostationary orbits are equatorial orbits and it is for that reason they are circular orbits while geosynchronous orbits are inclined orbit and they are not circular fine and there is only one geostationary orbit fine so because there is only one equator you have only one geostationary orbit while there are many inclined orbits so there are many geosynchronous orbits fine i hope you got the similarities and the difference and i hope you got a clarity with respect to geostationary and geosynchronous orbit if not please watch from the beginning in order to have a clear cut understanding fine and the next orbit which we will see now is geostationary transfer orbit that is gto see friends in a layman term this gto is a path which is taken by a spacecraft from a low altitude to reach the geostationary orbit fine so if i want to explain you this in a layman term imagine that you launch a rocket so obviously the rocket will take a curved path fine so it will take a curved path to reach the desired orbit fine and the path which is taken by the rocket to launch the satellite in the desired orbit is called as geostationary transfer orbit fine so i have given you a image here where you can see this red line is geostationary transfer orbit fine so it is the path which is taken by the rocket to launch the satellite to geostationary orbit fine so it's more than enough if you know this meaning fine now we will have a look at the low earth orbits so friends as i told you earlier low earth orbits are orbits where the altitude is less than 1000 km that is the satellite will be placed above the earth surface at an altitude of less than 1000 km fine so anything between 150 to 1000 km will be called as low earth orbits fine and friends i just want you to remember that in 2016 prelims there was a question about astrosat fine so where it was asked that astrosat was placed at an altitude of 1650 km fine so astrosat was a low earth orbit satellite and the altitude was 650 km while in upsc examination it was asked that whether it is placed at 1650 km fine so this is how upsc will trick you and if you don't know the basics you will tend to do the mistakes fine so just remember that low earth orbits have a altitude less than 1000 km fine and the satellite placed in this low earth orbit travel at a greater speed fine and it is said that a satellite which is placed in the orbit approximately takes 90 minutes to cover the whole earth it seems so this is the speed at which a satellite travels in this orbit and i hope everyone should know the reason for this it is because of gravity fine so at the low earth orbit the influence of gravity will be more and in order to escape the gravity the speed of the satellite will be more and one more feature to tell about the low earth orbit is that the satellite which are placed in the low earth orbit have very short lifespan fine so it is because of the friction between the atmospheric air molecules and the spacecraft 
So because of that drag, the lifespan of the satellites which are placed in this orbit are low. Fine. But again, it has many advantages too. That is because of the close proximity to the Earth's surface, the satellites which are placed in the low Earth orbits are utilized for imaging. So it is used for remote sensing, military purposes and so on. Fine. And uh, one more advantage is that to place a satellite in the low Earth orbit, the cost is very less. Fine. So it is also cost efficient. Fine. So you remember this thing that the altitude is less than 1000 km. Fine. And uh, the speed of the satellite are greater. That is it covers the Earth approximately in 90 minutes. And because of the close proximity to the Earth's surface, it is used for Earth imaging because the camera can give a good clarity shots and so fine. So this is all about low Earth orbit. And coming to the medium Earth orbit, see French medium Earth orbit has an altitude between 1000 to 10,000 kilometers. Few say it is below 20,000. So the numbers may vary, but the satellite which are placed in medium Earth orbit are used for telecommunication. Probe. It is more than enough if you know these points. Fine. And uh, coming to the polar orbit. So as the name depicts, a satellite which is placed in the polar orbits revolve around the Earth poles. That is the North Pole and the South Pole. And friends, generally it is a misconception that if a satellite is placed in the polar orbit, then it will accurately pass through the poles. No, it is not that. Even if it is closely associated towards the pole or even it passes closely towards the pole, then it is also called as a polar orbit. Fine. So, slight variation is accepted. Okay. And friends, generally polar orbits are low earth orbit. And one of the important feature of this polar orbit is that they pass through the equator in different longitudes. Fine. So, this polar orbit satellites would pass over equator on different longitudes in a successive time. Fine. And uh, a satellite which is placed in polar orbits are generally used for earth mapping and earth observation. And generally polar orbit satellites are not utilized for communication purposes because it moves in a different direction than that of the direction of the earth. Fine. So one should know about the earth rotation and uh, the direction which a satellite in the polar orbits would take. So because of this variation, these are not utilized for communication purposes. Fine. So that's it with respect to polar orbits. Now we will have a look at sun synchronous orbits. Fine. So friends, as I have given you an image here, sun synchronous orbits are also polar orbits. So they are quasi polar in nature. Fine. And uh, as I told you earlier, polar orbits are low earth orbits. One of the important feature of sun synchronous orbit, which you need to know is that if a satellite is placed in a sun synchronous orbit, then it passes over a given location on earth every time at the same local solar time. See, I will give you an example to remember this. Say, for example, you have placed a satellite above Sri Harikota. Fine. And as I told you, sun synchronous orbits are quasi-polar in nature and they have a greater revolving speed. Fine. But if a satellite pass over Sri Harikota at 10 a.m. today, then tomorrow at the same time, that is on 10 a.m., it will be above Sri Harikota. Fine. So that is, this satellite will pass over the planet's surface at the same local mean solar time. Fine. So this is one of the important feature of this sun synchronous orbit. I have also given you an image here to understand this. See friends, I would recommend you to just know the important feature and don't probe into this information because we are not scientists here. Fine. We just need to clear the UPS exam and it is more than enough if you know these points. Fine. So, these sun synchronous orbit satellites are utilized for military purposes and earth mapping. Fine. So, that is all with respect to this video and I would recommend you to please share my video if you feel it is worth and if you like my video, do hit the like button. Please place your opinion if you have any and give suggestions so that I could improve the quality of the video in such a way that it will benefit you. Fine. So, thank you friends. Thank you for watching.